Got another question for the NMR topic. So this is number 24 in the playlist. And as you can see, I'm calling this a tricky example, as you'll see when we get to putting the structure together. Anyway, I hope the video is helpful. And if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you subscribe and suggest um, topics for future videos? As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to give it a try first. Okay, so make a start. So we've got lots of information to process about compound L. So we're told that the empirical formula is C3H6O. So the first thing I want to do is work out the MR of that. So it's coming out at 58, and we're told that the molecular ion peak is at M over Z 116. So that's the MR of the molecule, of the full molecule, before it fragments. And you can see that that is double that. So the molecular formula is obviously double this ratio. We're going to look at the carbon-13 NMR spectrum now. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five peaks. So that means there's five carbon environments in the molecule. We've got a C double bond O environment, C single bond O environment, and we've got three carbon-carbon environments. So obviously the bulk of the analysis is with the proton NMR. So I've just zoomed out a little bit. I hope you can still see everything on the screen. So this one was without D2O. So we're seeing everything. And this one has been done in D2O. So remember, D2O will remove OH signals and NH signals, but there's no nitrogen in this, so there's no NH to worry about. So we've lost an OH signal. So you can see this signal here has disappeared in the D2O. So you'll notice it's got an area of one, which means there's only one proton in the environment. So what are our options? Well, could it be COOH? Well, the answer is no, because that would occur between 10 and 12 ppm. So the most likely thing is that it's an OH. So I'm going to analyse the NMR spectrum in detail now. I'm going to take each signal in turn, so the way I always do it. And notice we've got an expansion of this uh, multiplet at delta 2.7 ppm. I'll take each one in turn, do my usual thing, and then we'll build up a picture of the structure as we go. So starting with this one, we've got a triplet, roughly at delta 3.8 ppm. So what does triplet mean? It means there's an adjacent CH2 group. The area of 2 means it's a CH2 that causes the signal. And from the data sheet, the shift value means it's in an H to C, the single bond O environment. So we'll just draw that part of the structure up now. So that's what that would look like there. H to C to single bond O, 2 in that environment, adjacent to 2. And remember, we've already established, we've got a hunch that it's an alcohol, so it's likely that that single H is going to be there, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. So moving on to this signal here, which is another triplet with an area of 2, and it's within sort of this 3 to 4 ppm range. So essentially, I'm going to have to write exactly the same again, which using this plan of attack means we must have another one of these in the molecule. Now, I'm already thinking that can't be right because that would imply two OH groups, but we've already, sort of from the carbon-13 NMR spectrum, we know that we've got a C double bond O. So I'm already thinking this can't be right, which is why I think this is a tricky question. So we'll just leave that there. We'll come back to it when we start putting the, all the bits together. So moving on to this signal here, which we've got the expansion for. So hopefully you can see there's seven lines there, so that's called a heptet. That means there's an adjacent CH3 twice group, so two equivalent methyl groups adjacent to the proton causing that signal. The area of one means it's a CH causing the signal, and the shift value means we've got an H to C to C double bond O environment which is consistent with the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. Remember, we've got that um, carbon-oxygen double bond environment in there. So structurally, that's what that would need to look like. So this is the proton causing this um, multiplet. So H to C, the C double bond environment, with two adjacent 
um, CH3 groups. So the final signal is this one here, so it's a doublet, that means there's an adjacent CH, it's got an area of six, so that means there's two equivalent methyl groups, or six hydrogens equivalent to each other, causing the signal, and the shift is H to C to R. So the reason I've left this on the screen is because we're talking about these now. Okay, so we're at the final stage now where we've just got to put this together as a structure. So these are the two parts we've established. Remember, we've got huge doubt about the fact that well, there's two of these. And the answer is there's not. There can't be because basically we have all the atoms apart from a hydrogen in these two uh, parts already. So what I need to do is make this a hydrogen. And then if we do that and connect them up, we've actually got a structure that works. So where I think the exam board will go on with this question is they're actually exploiting this information that's actually at the bottom of the NMR page of the data sheet. So it does say chemical shifts are variable and can differ depending on solvent. So you've got these two bars, haven't you, on the data sheet. So you've got two to three H to C to C double bond O and three to sort of just over four H to C to single bond O. So it's not a sort of black and white cut off there. So maybe what's happened in this question is they've used a different solvent to what's been used on the data sheet values and this value here has drifted over into this region here. So it's changed slightly so remember, these protons here were the ones that were causing the trouble, and they do occur at about 3.1, 3.2 ppm on the spectrum that they gave us, which is just over the line there. So that's my um, argument there.